Can you imagine a world where young women actually looked forward to getting older? I cannot imagine such a world. I absolutely cannot. But wouldn't it be so wonderful? Imagine if you were a 20-year-old, and maybe you are a 20-year-old watching this. Imagine if you actually thought, wow, how awesome it would be to get my first wrinkle. Imagine if you thought, wow, I can't wait to see some creases here, some creases down on my chest, to get some saggy skin, some sunspots, signs that I'm wise, signs that I've lived, signs that I'm accomplished. Imagine if we actually looked forward to all of that. Well, when I read Justine Bateman's opening passage in her book, Face, and I'm going to read the first passage from that book now, I was just blown away. So let me read it to you and you'll see what I mean. When I was a smooth-skinned and plump-faced teenager, I really wanted to look like the older European actresses I saw in the Italian and French films of the 1960s and 70s. Chiseled cheeks, dark circles under their eyes, loose skin on the jawline, crow's, free, crow's feet framing the eyes. To me, these facial markings were the hallmarks of complex and exotic women. Women with confidence and attitude and style. Women who had no use for whatever you might think of them. Unfortunately, I was too young to have any of these interesting characteristics on my face. I longed for Jean Moreau's under-eye bags, Charlotte Rampling's sharp cheekbones and hooded eyelids, and Anna Magnani's deep and dark creases extending down from the inner corners of her eyes. I felt that if I had a face with those markings, people would immediately know I was interesting and complex. There would be no question. Well, I had never heard such an idea in all my life until I saw the 60 Minutes Australia show where they had um, Paulina Porzikova. Sorry if I can't pronounce the surname correctly. Porzikova, I think that's correct. And Justine Bateman, where they interviewed both of these women. Justine Bateman was a small section in that sort of 20-minute segment. I will link to that down below. It's on YouTube. But when I heard Justine Bateman speak, something shifted inside of me. And I know if you listen to her, beautiful woman, something will shift inside of you. So that is the topic of today's discussion, is how we as women can accept, enjoy, and embrace our aging faces. And who is Justine Bateman? I even had to Google her. I didn't realize that she had played Mallory in Family Ties. Was it in the 80s? I was too young to really remember that show. And she's Jason Bateman's sister. I didn't know that. But she has come from being an actress in front of the camera to now being a director. She's written books. So she's sitting in her artistic power. And I love that. I love that. She is going to be my new role model. And hopefully she will help me except my face and my flaws. It's not just about aging. For those of you who are new to my channel, my name is Louise and I am 44. I'll be turning 45. So I'm still young. I mean, I've got probably another 40 plus years left on this planet. And even so, I dread looking in the mirror. And I know that when I'm 50 or 60, I'll look back now and I will think, God, you looked so young. God, you looked so beautiful. What was wrong? with your face, what were you thinking? Why were you finding fault? I know I'm going to look back and think that. I look back now at my 30-year-old self and I think, why did I even go for that first Botox shot at 30 um, when I didn't need it? But already society, this, this toxic sickness that we have in society that tells women that they need to look young at all costs, it was inside of me. And I am a product of society and I don't feel the way Justine Bateman feels, I wish I did. And like, I just don't give a shit. Like, I think I look rad. I think my face represents who I am. Uh, I like it. And so that's basically the end of the road. Now, isn't it amazing? Her perspective it's so refreshing. So I watched that whole 60 Minutes um, Australian interview with the two women. And I have to just admit that Paulina Pozikova, for me, her message is a bit diluted because she is so beautiful. 
yes, she's in her 50s, her late 50s, but she's still got the face shape and structure, although she's lined and wrinkled and she's natural, um, which we don't see enough of in society. So I'm glad she is showing that. But look at her. She's dropped dead gorgeous. So I love her message, but I find it kind of ha harder to just hear her message because she is so beautiful. And I kind of feel like us less beautiful women, us more average looking women, what hope is there for us? If she's feeling in invisible, she shouldn't feel invisible. She's drop dead freaking gorgeous at 50 something. Then sometimes I think that I need plastic surgery. And then you get Justine Bateman who, and I say this with deep love because she has touched my heart with her message, but she does look kind of old, wrinkled. She looks her age, but she is not societally beautiful, although I think she does look cool and arty and beautiful in her own way. I mean, interestingly enough, when I was putting together all the research for this little video, I, when I first saw Justine Bateman's face, I did think, oh, she looks old. And my first thought was she could do with some work. Sorry, I admit it. I'm ashamed to admit it. I wish I didn't think these things, but I do. And I thought that. And then towards the end, after watching many of her interviews, because I really wanted to try and understand the woman who could look at this older wrinkled face of hers and say, I think I look rad. <laughs> And to think, I, to say, I like my face. The way she said it with that absolute surety. So after I watched all these interviews, eventually I also started to think, damn, she does look rad. Damn, her face is so interesting. And in fact, I started to think her face was, a, a, you can't say better because I really don't want to compare women to women anymore. It's not about comparison. But I kind of thought, wow, Justine Bateman looks, there's something. I, I don't know, something. She looks like she's lived, she looks intelligent, she looks interesting, unique, arty. It's, it's a face unlike any other. You would never, ever, ever mistake her for someone else. And yet, in the world of Instagram faces, often these models, these beautiful women, all look alike. They do, I'm sorry, but you couldn't tell one from the other. And whilst they are beautiful, and probably if I had a face like that, I would be singing the, the praises to the Lord, but they do look alike and they do sort of, it, it is a Stepford wife model, cut and paste, copy paste kind of a look. And I have aspired to that look, I'm ashamed to admit. So I know you are feeling these things too, you beautiful, unique, special woman who's watching. Whatever age you are, I know you are so weighed down by society. I am weighed down by all these expectations that that society puts on us women we are just <sighs> we are exhausted i'm exhausted and yet i have chased these things and i might continue to do so because i am a product of the world i live in and i'm not immune to hearing and seeing the criticisms that are lashed at women on social media in um, public opinions on magazines tv you, you hear them when they say oh she looks old she needs work done she's let herself go what's wrong with her what happened to her face? Oh my God. Oh. People do the same thing about weight. And yes, I know that sometimes nowadays men are being scrutinized the same way, but it's not as much. I look at my boyfriend and although he can see the signs of aging and he says, he admits, he thinks he looks tired, old. I can see it doesn't stop him. It doesn't halt him in his tracks the way those sort of thoughts do for me. If I wake up and look haggard and tired on a particular morning, I think the feeling for me is so much more one of it's going to stop me in my life. Whereas for him, it's like, okay, I look old and tired and he carries on with his day. He knows that no one is going to think less of him. He, it's just a description. He looks old. Okay, description, move on. For a woman, it's almost like a criticism of who we are. Like, how dare we? How dare we actually look our age notice that or I've noticed at least that somebody says to me wow you look really good for your age and I take it as a compliment or wow I thought you were 35 39 38 41 whatever any if, if, if it's below my actual age I'm like oh thank you thank you I take it as a compliment you have to think why why do we take something so random as a compliment you know if somebody says you look old why is that a negative thing so what if you look old? You are old. I am older than I ever have been. So if somebody says, sure, you're looking older, 
I should say, well, I know, yes, I should say that, but I don't. I get offended. And even just doing that in front of the camera is a brave thing for me, side note, because that shows off the part I don't like. This, yeah, where all of this is getting looser and all that. But it's happening to all of us. I don't know why we have to hide it, but we do. So watching Justine Bateman and really listening to her, I realized that there are things that you and I can do right now today that will help us with this negative, critical, self-flagellating mindset about something that we have no control over. You and I, besides the fact that you can stop smoking, maybe limit or stop drinking, you know, the things that are bad for you that will prematurely age you, you can do those things, fine. But whatever you do, stay out of the sun, stop smoking, you are going to age anyway. I'm going to, you're going to, it's going to happen. And so to feel bad about something over which you have no control, it's crazy. <laughs> it's psychotic, really. Now, I'm not saying that we shouldn't do Botox. I'm not saying that we shouldn't do fillers or laser treatments or plastic surgery. I, for one, certainly can't say that. I've had a nose job and a boob job, and I've been very happy with the outcomes of both. So I'm not against plastic surgery, but I've heard what Justine Bateman has said, which is don't go under the knife because of this fear. Don't go under the knife. Don't cut yourself open because you are so afraid of what will happen if you don't. And don't change your face out of fear. It's no, an opportunity. You want to do it, but I not mean, if you want to do it, fine. But I say, like, first take the opportunity, get rid of that fear of not being employed or or not having a maid or not being listened to or whatever, because otherwise that fear is going to stay well, under always. the rug. And she's right. If you think that having a firmer face and a tighter neck and looking younger is going to get you things in life, because that is the lie we have all been sold that if you look younger. You will find a partner, you will stay married, your husband won't get tired of you, you might be in a better position at work, you'll get more opportunities. We have been told that attractive people, it's been told over and over again, that attractive people have more doors opened to them. But is this true? Is this really, really true? Maybe if you looked more distinguished, wise, older, you might actually be promoted for better leadership positions in your company. I mean, think about that. It's interesting that men do actually often aspire to or have positive associations with looking older. But for women, in our heads, we don't. But I actually think in reality, an older, distinguished looking woman does carry more authority and weight. If we have women in positions of leadership, if she looks like a young bimbo, I don't think that's going to fly. So the next female, like Margaret Thatcher, president, somebody who's in a position of power and leadership, to my mind, she should look wise, wrinkled, older. So I think we need to change our thinking on a lot of these things. We are fed movies and media of younger women, but it doesn't mean that that's the way it is in society and in real life. I think, yes, in the romantic playing field, there could be a legit concern for women that if you don't look beautiful, young, unlined, possibly in the dating arena, you will. I don't know. Will you come short? Or do you just think you will? It, it's a tough one. Um, but I do think those are valid concerns that women have. Like, if I don't look young, I might not get a mate. I might not find a partner. <laughs> and then as my boyfriend said when I was discussing this with him, yeah, but in a secure relationship, you don't need to worry about all that. But, like I said, what if your partner dies? Or he leaves you. He cheats on you. You do something that pisses him off. Or you want a divorce because you've grown in separate directions. Things happen. Life happens. And you could always be in a position where you're single again. And I think in that area, in the area of dating, it is a valid concern for women. However, as Justine Bateman says, do you really want to date that superficial man? Is that really the partner for you? So her method is, and this is what I want to share with you, her method for accepting how you look, accepting yourself truly and deeply is to say, okay, I look old and that terrifies me because of what? And go there in your mind. What is it about looking older that terrifies you? And it's really, it's it's based in a fear. It's like, if people think I look old, then therefore... I, I am. And there's some fear there because it's not about this skin. It's about... Fear you're not going to be listened to anymore. Fear you're not going to find a mate. Fear you'll lose your job. Fear you won't have a job. 
But my position is that those fears already existed in you before your before face started you changing. Why are you scared to step out into the world with wrinkles on your face? What terrifies you? So write your fears down. Get your pen and paper in your journal and say, yeah, let's just take a journal and write down, okay, I'm terrified of looking older because... And now for me, I actually don't know why. <laughs> it's, it's just a general fear that I've picked up from the air around me, from society. I don't know why I'm scared of looking older. I mean, honestly, it's not going to affect my job. I'm an artist. Primarily, that is my primary job. Okay, it might affect my views on YouTube. Let's say, because I do love YouTube. I love being on camera. And I do think that, ish, my face could be better. <laughs> If I looked younger, maybe more people would watch. So there is a concern there. And I think that it's shallow and it's probably not valid. Probably it's the quality of my videos, the tone of my voice, the topics I bring to you. Probably these are really the things that will make or break my channel. And it's got nothing to do with how I look. But I do focus on, oh, I do worry about how I look for YouTube. But as an artist, it really doesn't matter how I look. As a woman with a boyfriend, I do want to look good for him. I do want to look good for the man in my life. And that is also real. It's real. So my fear is that if I look terrible, he might stop desiring me. He might stop loving me. I don't know. You don't know. It's a, it's a real fear. So I think you've got to get down to that fear and imagine it, feel it, go there in your mind. I mean, the other fear is that your family is going to stop loving you. Well, is that real? No. <laughs> I know my son would never, ever stop loving me. I'm pretty sure most children would never, ever stop loving their parents just because of a few wrinkles or lines or saggy skin. I love my mother and she's 72. I don't care what she looks like. I don't care about all the loose skin on her face. But she had to have very valid surgery to her eyelids to remove some loose skin because it was affecting her vision. And now there, you could say that plastic surgery is useful and helpful and sometimes necessary. I think we need to look at the message that Justine Bateman is saying, which is she's not against plastic surgery. For herself, she has chosen to love, accept, and rock her face as it is, and I think that's amazing. She's shining a torch, showing a way to young women that you can choose to not do anything. That's great. But also, you can choose to do something. It's available nowadays. And throughout history, women have altered themselves. You know, you get those African tribes where they put all the rings on their neck and elongate their necks. You get the Chinese foot binding. You get the waist cinching corsets. Throughout centuries, women have done things to themselves and altered themselves. And it's not new. So also, if you've had something done, don't feel bad about yourself now and think, geez, I wasn't strong enough mentally to resist. We are products of the societies that we live in. But I think she's right. Do it from a place of reality where you know that you are just going to fix the external and that's all. It's not going to change things in your life. You're not going to get more job opportunities. You're not going to, unless maybe you're in front of a camera, but even then you might miss an opportunity of playing Let's say you're an actress playing an older woman if you fix your face. But I think, yes, it is a sickness in society, but people are thirsting for real-looking women. And I think things are changing for the better. Yes, you get the actresses that look ridiculously young, like Sandra Bullock. <laughs> that is not the face of a 58-year-old. I'm sorry, but it's not. She's had work done for sure. In fact, in this interview, this clip I'm showing now, you can see she's not even moving her forehead, her eyebrows, so she has Botox. Must have had a face look. Nicole Kidman, I mean, I look at her and I think, there's no way on planet Earth that that woman at 50, what is she, 57, can look that way. There's no way. Let's just see how old she is quickly. Sorry, Nicole Kidman's 55. Justine Bateman is now 57. You get um, Sofia Vergara, who's 50 and looks 25. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous, and yet I wouldn't mind looking that way myself. I can't help feeling that I wouldn't mind looking 25 at the age of 50. I don't know if that's right or wrong. It's confusing to be a woman in this day and age, and I know that men have their own issues. This is not the place to discuss it. This is for women today. If you get plastic surgery, and here I can speak from authority because I've had a nose job at the age of 27. I had my breasts done uh, at the age of 32, 31, 32. And for me, I have no regrets about those plastic surgeries, especially my nose, to where I loved myself first with the nose I had. And then I'd almost given up on the idea of a nose job when 
someone said to me, someone close said, well, if it bothers you, just do it. And I realized, yes, it's not going to change my whole life, but it does bother me and I do want to change it. And that was that. It just changed my nose. The hump was shaved down. I was happy. I've never, ever regretted it. So I think if you do go for plastic surgery, just know it's not going to change the fears that you have on the inside. It's not going to change anything deep on the inside, but it will change the external. Maybe for the better, maybe you don't like it. Also, you've got to realize that plastic surgery is not that drastic. You're still working with old skin. So yes, you can tighten your old skin, but your skin is still not going to be ever the skin of a 20-year-old. Yes, you can do some skin treatments, lasers, fillers, whatever, but you're still going to be an older version of yourself. Your hands, your creping skin here, your knees, your old toes, eventually, I mean, you get old veins that pop out. We're all going to age. So you can fix your face. What about the rest of your body? You've got to say, where do you draw the line? Where do you stop? Where do you start? And then you've got to make the decision that is absolutely right for you, for your life situation, for your finances. If you can't afford any of this, it's really, really, really not worth doing it. It's really not worth breaking the bank, taking out loans, putting yourself into debt just for a minor fix. And it will be minor because any surgery you have done, you are still going to be you. You're still going to look like you. Yes, you may be an improved version, but you're still going to be a 60-year-old, 70-year-old, 80-year-old woman at some point, and you're still going to have to live with that. So I do think Justin Bateman is right. Address your fears, come to a place of acceptance, and, and know that the things you want to do in your life, you can do regardless of how you look. And I think that is the most empowering message she has. It's a message that I want to take on, and I don't know where I'll be in 5, 10, 20 years time. I don't know how I'll feel about plastic surgery. I don't know. All I know is that I have had Fraxel done. You can see that video. I'll link to it down below. And I've had Profilo done, one of my best videos ever. You can watch that video down below. And I found the results underwhelming, to be honest. So treatments that need to be done repetitively to get benefits. And then you're just throwing money away. For what? Whereas you could just accept your face as it is and say, I choose to live in a world where I see beauty in the lines. I see beauty in the wrinkles. I see beauty in the uniqueness that is my face. It's mine and mine only. Only I look like this. We can choose that. And we as a collective could change things by wanting and demanding to watch films with real looking actresses. And in fact, the hopeful part is that if you look on Netflix, there are people, actresses now, movies, sitcoms, documentaries, where women are, are looking real in front of the camera. Far away is one of them. I mean, that actress is not society's standard of beauty. And yet look at her. Well, Mania is another one, which I love. Liv Healy, so relatable. And actually, do you remember back in, was it the 90s, Bridget Jones? Overweight, smoker, swore. There are these examples and we are hungry for it we are thirsty for it so what we can do as the consumers as the viewers is tell the companies this is what we want to watch give those kind of things thumbs up maybe write to netflix whatever it is demand to see real faces and the narrative could change i don't know about you but worrying about my appearance and i do it is exhausting and i'm ashamed to admit that i have thought negative things about other women thinking Ah, she could do with a bit of work. Ah, she could do with some filler Botox. I don't like it when I think these thoughts. And I know that you don't like it either. It's, it's a poison in our minds. I hope we can change things, you and me. And I hope we can love all the bits. And if we change it, we change it. That's also okay. If you want to go under the knife, there's no judgment from me. Who knows? I might do it one day. I don't, I don't know. I really don't know how I'm going to feel in two or three years' time, five years' time, ten years' time. Who knows? But let's work on our insides as well. I'm here with you. I love you. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Bye. Yeah. It's a lie that there's something wrong with your face. There's nothing wrong with your mm -hmm. face.